Hey folks, welcome back to Shadow Empire. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is round one one five, and uh, yeah, so let's have a look at what happened. No, before I, I talk about what happened in the last episode, I've, I've got a couple of comments that I want to um, I want to kind of reply to. One of them was, and I, I did actually, I usually try to reply in the com in the comments themselves if I can, if I've got time. Uh, some of you leave very very detailed comments, and I really appreciate it. One of the uh, my, one of my viewers who leaves very very detailed comments is uh, one McClack, and uh, one McClack had a couple of comments. One of them was that he he was like asking why I was so obsessed with putting up scav furnaces, and um, I want I want to explain this, but I don't want to go on about it. But the reason why, okay, there's just uh, there's two answers to this question. One is to deal with the you know the actual the actual question, and the other is to sort of look at the top down level. So the the answer to the actual question is that I don't want to be building scab furnaces they suck right um they are they suck i'd rather have the scab points going into metal production the the reason why i'm doing it is because often i'm under some sort of t uh, resource or time constraint that stops me from doing that like if you've got 200 food left and you're using 300 a turn and your energy is down to 20 and you're using 30 or 40 a turn you've got a big problem right and you can't wait four turns to get up a scab solar panel three uh, every level of this game pretty much I don't think I've had a breather in this in this game there's been a few turns where I felt like the pressure go off but for the most part I've been under pressure by something every single turn so um, you just have to do what you need to do in the moment and if scab furnaces is the only thing you can get up in one turn get it up yeah that you just don't don't worry about optimal play whatever that means in shadow empire i don't think anybody knows what optimal play is and anybody claims to i'm, I'm very skeptical of <laughs> to be honest because when you've got a game that's this complex with this many indirect you know systems with that the player can only in, uh, affect indirectly like things like population movement and stuff then you know I'm, I'm very skeptical of, of claims of optimal play. The other thing is, of course, that there's several reasons why I don't necessarily play optimal play. There's probably three reasons. One is that, um, yeah, I'm kind of skeptical whether something is optimal or not. Two is sometimes I do stuff because I think it'll be more fun for the video and more fun for me. So, you know, if I think, if I, if, like, for example, it, it might be more optimal for me to end this war and try to go fully on with these guys or end this war and go fully on with these guys. Like, if I cared about winning more than I did about a fun game that's exciting for you to watch, I probably would have done that. But that, you know, that then that drags the that drags the game out, like, to, you know, so it's going to be so much longer. And, it, yeah, it might be more likely to win, but I care less about winning than I do about making it an interesting and exciting game. So that's one thing that people need to, you know, I need to make quite clear. Um, you know, obviously I want to win. And it's disappointing if I do lose a game, but it's not the end of the world, and I'm much more interested in people enjoying the videos. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the sort of the the macro, the micro and macro level of that <laughs> that question, um, if that makes sense. Um, the other thing that Mom McClack said is it might be good uh, time to check up on the Air Research Council, the Air Force Research Council. I think they were doing a linear technology, also move GR automated turrets. Okay, GR automated turrets, we, uh, I can't do because okay, look, we got a road issue here let's just get some roads up the problem is it's logistics and i've got better things to be spending my industrial points on right now these guys are not starving they're just not getting energy so they're not going to be any use in a fight but they're not going to starve so don't worry about those guys they'll be all right we'll, we'll figure out a way of moving them at some point most likely when we put a truck station up uh, somewhere around uh, ogolar ruins here this new zone Okay, uh, Zabia Sus Susquatch said, slave trader for population. Right, okay, he didn't say that. That was my sum summary. So we have got a slave trader, and that is... I'd forgotten about that. We've got loads and loads of money, and at least until recently, we had the ability to print money, pretty much. I mean, look at this. I don't want to be selling rare metals, but, you know, we can sell 14 rare metals here and get uh, 1,600 credits. I ain't going to do that. I'm going to buy... I think I'm going to... We need to trade to have some more money first. But look at that look they're spending 1400 credits just on or 1600 credits for some rares i'm kind of tempted to do that it's only 14 rares and i know we do need them but we are we do we will have another scav scavenging operation going up soon um so that might be worth doing um however what else can we sell we can sell stuff like food you know, obviously we don't want to sell all our food, but we can sell a reasonable amount of food for credits if we need to. Uh, we can sell water. We, can, you know, again, we don't want to sell all our water, but water is a decent price at the moment. Uh, metal is a decent price. We've got loads of metal. Uh, we can sell 61 metal here for 1,500 credits. Aye, aye. That's a no-brainer. Um, yeah, so there's there's all sorts of stuff we can do. But um, yeah, by getting metal uh, money, since we have got the slave trader here, 
we can actually buy uh, population and this is this is like a really really useful thing now these guys don't like this idea so we can't do it too often but buying you know buying population from time to time that's a really really cool thing and i'd forgotten about that completely uh, we can also extort a tax payment from this guy <laughs> let's just yes, get the, let's get the population first so we we, we ex, you know we traded 1000 credits for 2000 population in a pinch that could be really 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 powerful um so from time to time i'm going to be doing that and that's just going to be increasing our population so yeah we are we are in, engaging in the slave trade but when it comes to video games i do not care about stuff like that uh, it's only a game uh, so Marauders in Crank. Uh, let, actually, before we go into that, let me read the rest of the uh, comments out. Uh, so yeah, thanks to everyone who le leaves a comment. I really appreciate it. Uh, especially you guys who, well, everyone, but especially you guys who leave very detailed comments. I can't always reply to them because I'm just getting so many comments now on my videos that it's starting to take up, you know, significant time. <laughs> but I try to reply to everyone, especially if they're an interesting comment. If you're just saying thanks for the video, you don't worry about commenting, then I'll just give it a heart. You know how it is. Leo Panther says, play archaeology stratagems on the new zones to find art artifacts. That's a really, really, really good idea. Uh, I think this would be a good one because there's f a fair chance of finding artifacts here. Um, let's wait till the end of the turn to do that. And I will I will be able to remember because I've got my question sheet up next to my OBS. So I should be able to remember that. Uh, or, uh, Mr. Unimportant said, kind of crazy how some of those demon fights are going swimmingly and some of them are a bit of a struggle. You should give that b battalion an hon honorary title, the Demon Slayers or something. Right, I considered doing that and I think that's a great idea and I like the suggestion. So let's let's go into unit admin and we're going to call the 4th Infantry Demon Slayers. The 4th Demon Slayers. Indie Inf. There we go. It's a horrendously long name, but there we are. All right, so the fourth. There we go. These these guys are the demon slayers. They're actually they are actually pretty good as well. Look, they are starting to level up. Their experience will start translating into uh, into ex into levels. And again, I think it was one McClack who said, you know, by the way, it doesn't automatic when you get a certain amount of experience points, they don't automatically jump up in level. Um, it works in a different way. I can't remember exactly how it works. All right. Okay, with that all out of the way. Let's uh, let's get on with the let's get on with the game. Let's see what happened in the vidcom. Okay, so we lost a recycling facility because the scavenge points have been depleted. Um, another one has gone down. A scavenging furnace. Well, it was the same place. Uh, we're still in the time of calm, and we've completed uh, the Sunny Two. This is our first fighter, and we've also discovered rocket engine, which we probably don't need on this planet. I don't think. And uh, we got a bunch of cards, including a trench, which might be useful. Send spy ring, which is going to be good. Now, now that we've got the Secret Service Council up, they are going to start giving us these better, uh, better spying cards. So they've got spy teams, for example. Uh, we've got a non-aggression pact, and all for the front. Uh, I think all for the front. We're going to play immediately. It's just such an important card. Copy that. Okay. It's uh, so. Persuaded by the need to sacrifice in order to attain victory, our populace received a 47% bonus on its casualty threshold. This is going to be important for keeping our people happy uh, because we are getting penalties and happiness is dropping again, as it has a habit of doing when I'm when I'm fighting very bloody wars. Um, uh, let's have a, look, a quick look at the history. I'm just going to take a sip of tea while it's playing. Okay, we, we got attacked there by Brambod and they got wrecked. Okay, but we did get pushed back here. They they lost a lot of troops in that battle and they lost the tanks here too. Now they lost tanks to rovers, which is kind of hilarious. Okay, looks like these guys are starting to pull back as well, Goldstone. Um, I think if I can get the fuel together... Okay, we got pushed back by some demons. Those demons are like the endless thorn in my side. It's quite funny. I think a brown, uh, sorry, the goldstone battle. I think if we can, if we're careful, we might be able to, we might be able to get an encirclement here, and that would be really, really catastrophic for them. I think. Um, now we'd have to probably have to put our troops on all-out attack or something, to in order to get that done. It's possible. Now these guys are on no retreat. That's interesting. Look at that. Infantry defense plus 75%. Yeah, okay, so no retreating allowed. So no, there's the chances of us beating those guys unless we've got something very, very powerful to kick, to hit them with. It's pretty damn low, I think. Um, and I mean, I don't know. 
it's possible I guess if we put them on a but 70 plus 75 percent defense and these are experienced troops look these guys are regulars um, they don't have any seasoned they got a people's hero in there which increases their attack value by 40 percent that's a really really good card oh, that's a really really strong card these guys are on no retreat but I'm fairly sure that we'd be able to beat these uh, maybe not look yeah, these guys have got a minus 67% close combat modifier, but look, the overall def modified defense power um, is 22. Th they're actually, yeah, so it's 2 to 1. I can understand why they would th why this is like this. Now, um, yeah, we've got a little bit of a readiness penalty. I'd want to recon that if I was going to do that as an attack, um, but that would be good because we could actually, sa we could actually um, cut off this zone completely. I think that might be a better thing to do. I would like to, I would like to cut these troops off. This um, th I'm going to have to think about this. This is like a really really important decision for me to make. Um, I think it's going to be better than just attack, trying to attack straight in here. Um, yeah, we do. I, I would like to try to get an encirclement. I feel like if we manage to defeat this guy, just see if we got anybody with the. Okay, those those got enough. That's funny. They've got enough readiness points that they could go in and attack here. Um, they wouldn't have many action points. They've got the full complement of action points, minus 35. That means uh, I think they'd get six rounds to attack. These guys would get the full right, uh, nine rounds. Um, if we put, yeah, I'm interested to see what we can do here. Yes, yeah, some look. Some of our some of our troops have got enough action points to be able to attack in. I'm, I, what I might do is I might actually pause this one and just kind of come up with let me figure out if I can come up with a way of dealing with it um, before I do that though I think we're going to go and look at the decisions we got some marauders in crank uh, this is our new zone here in the north uh, it's yeah this is this is our new zone now this is one of the problems you're going to have like we haven't got a, go a governor here yet I think we probably better put a governor in first so Vince Clark is a suitable candidate. Uh, Astro Davis. Is there any of them that I remember that one I might have wanted to have? Capability is the most important thing, really. Yeah, she's not great. I don't. Want, I don't really want her in there. The reason why she's got a suitability rating, I think, is because she's got some. Yeah, she's got. Must be technician. I guess that's the reason. Yeah, she was a mechanic. Uh, so I'm not bothered about her. He's capability one, so I kind of I don't really want to keep him in there. He's also capability one. Um, which is going to be the most important zone? Because we've got three zones to basically put people into this turn. Maybe this one. Yeah, I need to get this one up and running. I might put Vince Clark in there first. He's got decent... Com uh, yeah, he's got fairly decent skills. Yeah, he's got Investigation 27 as well. Now, that would, that could be quite useful. Yeah, maybe I'll put him in, in Crank just for, the t just for the time being. Uh, no, I'll put him in Marlette. Aye, aye, sir. Okay. Okay, Astro Davis, he's also pretty good. Let's put him in crank. Aye, aye, sir. Okay, now, Astro Davis. Okay, he's got a better a bit, a chance to actually beat this one. Uh, 60 plus 4d40. That's going to be an offensive tactics roll. Do we've got an advisor to add uh, to add to him uh, I think we can add another advisor this turn as well because we've got enough so yeah we got an, we can actually put up another advisor I think in order to do that we want a much better commander uh, we, you know we need somebody who's really really suited for that job um, who have we got capability wise that isn't in a great position you see total Vega would be a, make probably make a good advisor I can't remember whether advisor is a better role or not than uh, secretary it's really expensive though to to relieve the Copy that. 
Yeah, look, um, it's quite expensive to relieve him. Yeah, same faction members will suffer from 1914 to their relation levels. If you make a promise for another or better job, the uh, this effect on other leaders will be halved. Okay, so I'll be 7% on the relation levels if I get him, offer him a better job. Um, oh, damn it. I can't remember whether... I think the advisor is one of the better roles. I think it might be better than the secretary. I might, I'd probably have to pause that and look, and I can't really be bothered. <laughs> um, I think maybe what I'll do... Uh, let's just do this. Aye, aye, Failure. Okay, we got some danger there. That's not. I don't really care about that too much. Secret Service Council needs a leader as well. Right, Ina Cooper, look. She's capability 3, but she's actually got 55 covert ops. Now, I seem to remember there was someone better, better suited for this job, but I'm a bit worried. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe she's just going to be the best person. Uh, we want command skills and covert ops. Let's just... Uh, what am I doing here? Sorry guys, I'm uh, if I'm a bit scatterbrained today, I'm actually fasting <laughs> and I've not eaten for two days. So that's part of the reason my brain my brain's a little bit scatty. Uh, let me just see what we can do here. Right, we want to select all, then we want to go to covert ops. Here we are. Okay, so it, actually the secretary had the highest covert ops. Then it was Willie Radon Walker, um, the commander of the 4th Modern Infantry Brigade. Yeah, like he's got really high covert ops, look. Now, he would like to be promoted, and that would make the syndics happy too. Uh, we've also got this director of the Supreme Command Council. She's got really, really, really high covert ops. I could move her. The problem is, uh, she's using. She's also got 83 high command, and she's using that right now. And she's using that skill look. Yeah, I'm kind of reluctant to move her. But 80, wow, 86. Look, she's got a 48 war roll. We'd have a, we'd have a killer uh, covert ops person if we moved her in there. He's also really good, look. And he's almost a bit too good for operational, you know, for, for a brigade. She's just got 27. So hers is like 57. Like, I'd probably rather have her in the OHQ, to be honest. She's capability three as well, so she would level up pretty quick. Let's give you a better job. All right, I'm going to move you, I think. There he is, Willie Radon Walker. This is the right guy, isn't it? Yeah. He's going to, He's actually better, uh, better suited here. Copy that. Okay. So he's our new Secret Service Council. He's got He's got a kind of Secret Service Council guy grin as well. Did you see that? Don't trust anything that, that guy says. Um, okay, active field operations, spying operations and internal security. I think for the time being we just leave this on no changes and I'm just going to check what check what all those uh, cards do. Uh, just for a few turns we'll, we'll just get up a bit of a mix then we can fix that later. Economic Council task priorities. Yeah I'm not worried about economic policies. Uh, prospecting is kind of important. But I want a bit more into research than in the rest. There we go. Okay, dokie. Okay. Um, and then we've got... Yeah, we've still got this advisor. Now... 29 political points. We ain't got a whole lot of political points this turn. Who would be... Who would make a good advisor? Really, when you're, when you're looking at an advisor, it's just your general... It's your... It's, just look at the high capability guys who've been there for a while and who've been in a variety of jobs. You want people who've just got, like, high scores, like this guy. Like, he's the director of the Military Research Council. He's just really, really good all over, look. He'd be an excellent advisor, but I'm a bit reluctant to move him out of that council. Uh, he's got 93 in Inventor, look. That's just absolutely wild. Have we got anybody who is just not in a job at all? Yeah, so she's capability 3. I love this game because his, there's such interesting decisions and you know again this is this is the sort of, I'm going to talk about this when I start my series on new uh, for new players which I'm talking about doing well I've started recording and writing but um, 
this is one of those mechanics right if you're playing on beginner or something you don't really need to worry about the leaders don't really matter too much uh you know as long as you you kind of have to try hard on beginner to really to really get big problems with them whereas once you start playing on normal and above like hard then this this kind of this decision actually starts being becoming really really meaningful but uh what what do you do here what would you guys do would you put in a you know would you swap this person say into another job so that we could we could free up a more experienced leader for the advisor because the advisor are, advisors are really really useful this guy's attached to doug gallywalker at the moment who is the military research council probably doesn't need to be attached to him now to be honest um but yeah he look for example he's a great he's he's a really really good advisor although he needs to be used we need to be setting him to advise now on the on the um in war as well i might actually right okay here's here's an idea here's an idea let's touch the advisor yeah we've got no one in the fourth infantry, uh, infantry brigade right so this turn we probably don't want to be doing too much in the way of of warfare I think we're gonna we'll just we'll what we'll do is we'll just bide our time here yeah um I might actually put like her for example she's got decent combat rating I might actually put I might hit earmark her uh, uh, Ina Cooper for the fourth infantry now that we're not really moving it this turn okay um Yeah, so back to the advisor decision. This is a big one for me, I think. He'd be a good advisor as well. Look at this. But I kind of want him where, where he is at the moment, in the third. Now, just remind myself of which one the third is. Okay, there's green. The third are down here. Yeah, so I, I want a good leader down there too. Hmm, and it's an interesting choice this is. Yeah, she's not going to be a, a great a great advisor, to be perfectly honest. He'd be good. He'd be really, really good. Hasn't got the administrative stuff, but he'd be a good war advisor. I might call him. Now, let's just see. He's at, um, uh, he's in the second. Now, the second aren't doing a whole lot at the moment. They're kind of they're under strength, I think. I think we could probably move him this turn too. Again, you've got to be careful because obviously, you know, it stalls your offensives doing stuff like this. But let's give you a better job. Okay, he's going to be happy with this job though. Because that is def an advisor is definitely a better job. Here we go. He's going to be the advisor. Okay, he actually improved 1%. He wasn't, he was too cool. He's too cool for school and he wasn't really that fussed. Um... So we've got a better advisor now. Now these advisors we do want to use. I'm actually going to write myself a note here just to say use advisors. Okay. All right. Uh, we got a model design council decision. Um. Can we get an improved APC? Oh, wait, hang on. Someone was talking about bikes. They were saying that you can... Yeah, get the charge gauss rifle on the bikes. Now. Wait, wait a minute. Let me just check how much that's going to cost. Yeah, that's 120 bureaucratic points. This is really easy to do. So, let's do that straight away. That's going to come out next turn. Those guys only ever get padded armor. That's the only thing. I'd like to see... I'd like to see combat armor on these guys. I don't... You know, I, I think you could have some sort of stripped down version of combat armor on those... That would be really, really cool. Okay, right. As far as military stuff this is concerned this turn, um, I think we are limited in what we can do. These guys have moved in this turn. They don't have... So I think we can counter-attack. And we will do it with the... With the formation that actually does have... Uh, a leader. Let's just see what this guy's like. All right. He's got some offensive tactics. We're going to be using him in offense. He's not the best. He's not the best guy. This is capability one. We probably want to move this guy out soon. Um, if we can get a, a better leader in there, that would be good. Um, but let's just for the time being, we're going to put them on all out attack. Okay. Now these guys are going to hit hard. 
and I want to hit hard on here. Let's just move these guys up. What's the chances of doing this? No, not very good, because they are on such a powerful uh, defense, defensive posture. So yeah, it's just going to be these, look. But we're going to attack him with these. Oh, look at that. Even so. It's readiness is the problem. They're just not ready to attack. Yeah, I'm go I'm I'm not I'm just going to scrap that. That's a terrible idea. Uh so let's just I'm actually going to put them back onto Let's put them back onto defense. There we are. Oh, sorry. It needs to be done on the HQ. Order acknowledged. Okay, well, there we go. It was worth a look. Let's try these guys. Try, let's try and get the encirclement here. They're not defending themselves very well. They're not even seeming to fire Mission accomplished. okay excellent wow okay so only those guys can move I didn't really want to use that brigade but there we go let's try and get everything that we can get in there now they're not going to be able to attack on well, no retreat so, these guys are going to starve. There we go. All right. Also got, uh, we did have this as well. It's just, uh, we don't need those this turn, I don't think. Yeah, um, so we, we are going to cut these guys off. They will eventually starve. And, uh, but the people will as well. And we don't, I, I don't want to kill all the population that would be really really bad for me uh, I'm gonna bring these guys back by the way if, have they actually got yeah they've got logistics actually that's kind of interesting let's just see if we can how far we can push down here yeah it might be interesting to see what we can do here um, okay we're putting up a border on this side got some militias that's gonna push that border back Uh, we've got a we got a bunch of assets here at Wolfen. Uh, I'm just going to re replace one of the missing units in the second. Oh, I've only got 15, 53% logistics. What's going on there then? What, what, what? I'm pretty sure we can do that. Yeah, we can raise a bit. Look, we can do it. Um, yeah, we got the logistics. It's confusing. Why is it telling me that then? Okay. Um, and then we should be able to just manually do that. Uh, manually replace the troops. We get any RPGs? We can get two. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, we've actually re we've got another uh, battalion which we formed to to uh, to make up for the fact that the second has actually lost a whole bunch. Uh, these guys are all on defense as well. Let's see what we can do here. Um, we got too many troops attacking there. Interesting. I don't want to lose the. Uh, I don't want to lose these walkers. They're quite useful. Let's just attack him with all of these. It, it's looking. 
The odds are looking a bit rough, but we'll try. Okay. Yeah, let's get these bikes in just so we've got some more troops up this way. Now, uh, also, they'll they'll look at these. If they can see them and they'll be like, whoa, what's going on here? We need to back off. I think that'll be... That's the idea anyway. Yeah, let's not do too much here. Um, they are already backing off into their main zone. Be interesting to see if they try a counter push this turn. I'd be quite excited to see what they're doing. Uh, let's just send the Demon Slayers into these guys again because these are, these are going to be struggling. They're being har harried every single turn and they're losing a whole bunch of troops every turn. Mission accomplished. Okay. I'm going to keep going with these because I think we, if we can if we can surround them, we might be able to kill them. Let's just see what we can put a, if we can put a stop to these demons. By the way, my old buddy Trifler, I used to, I had a bit you know we had a bit of a disagreement because I always said that attacking with machine guns always seemed to get terrible casualties, and he was like, nah, not really. Um, but I've uh, I've actually started taking a leaf out of his book and just using machine guns to attack now. When you've got a uh, decent, when you've got decent armor on them, they are pretty effective. They're not they're not really designed to do that job, but they uh, don't do it early on though. I'll, I'll stand by what I said with early level. Oh, lost some GR troops. Yeah, not enough troops against too many. I think here yeah, that's the problem. Still, it'll keep it'll hold them back for a little bit, uh, a little while. Um, let's move these. Yeah, we'll bring these bikes in. I might just keep them on this line here so we can upgrade them next turn. Move those just that one group up that way. Okay, they've got Sansaria here. Want to kind of push those guys back a little bit. Do it, do it now. Mission accomplished. There we go. Look, let's push, push those guys uh, backwards a little bit. Wow, these guys are um, okay. It's bunker buster. They got. I thought they had APCs. I just got. I was like, wow, they got APCs. <laughs> What's going on? No, they are not APCs. Okay, let's get uh, let's get a dirt road up this way. There we go, just so those guys can get some uh, ammunition or whatever it is that they need. Yeah, it's going to be ammo they'll want. Alright, uh, these bikers are not much good now down here. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, somebody pointed out something very, very useful, by the way. We do need to get some, uh, some machine gunners. I'm going to put these machine gunners and stick them on this volcanic, you know, on this... Um, this volcanic asset, volcanic power. I think we're going to bring these militia down this way. Where are we going to send them? We'll bring them down here, uh, just so we've got some more troops on this line. Okay, this I'm feeling a bit better about this line. This is also starting to resolve. Um, we need, uh, providing we don't get too wrecked next turn without having a commander. This is a bit risky what I'm doing here, but we'll see how it goes. The AI will have to switch posture. Um, I think the AI is playing a lot better in that respect, though. It does seem to be using postures a lot better now. So I'm, I'm be I'll be curious to see if it switches posture and tries to attack us. Let's get these overlays off. Okay, what do we got? We've only got uh, we've only got 19 bureaucratic points, so I kind of want to keep these. Now uh, I did play a, an all for the front card, so I'm hoping. We're not going to jump over that uh, barrier on the uh, casualties. Uh, do we have any colon colonists? No, I haven't been getting colonists yet. Oh yeah, that was another thing I wanted to talk about. So, in one of the, uh, I think I, I had a couple of comments, people saying, "Oh, you you can just use colonists to move, you know, to move between population." I think when I started talking about that, I was talking about I started talking about colonizing new zones, and then I kind of got myself distracted. And as I often do, and then I start talking about moving between two zones. So just to clarify, uh, you're quite right. If you are setting up a new zone, you want to use colonists, right? Because the there won't be any issues generally in a new zone. 
So the colonists you send will stay there. Uh, I, I, I think I, while I was talking, I kind of sort of transitioned into talking about another issue, which is trying to move, use colonists to move between two zones that have got drastically different, you know, civilization scores or, work, you know, anything that can affect pop migration, like danger or, or you know, the amount, uh, the amount you're paying people, all these little things that you can do to nudge this indirect mechanic of population movement. In that case. Be a bit careful about using colonists. Yes, they will. You can send them over, but if they if that's not an attractive place to be, they're just going to go they're, over the next dozen turns. They'll just go straight back. So it's not reliable. Um, but you can do it. Don't get me wrong, but it's kind of it's unreliable. Um, the colonists really are best used for what they are designed to do, which is colonizing new locations. But uh, I appreciate you guys picking me up on that because you, I did make a, I, I think I'd, I think I, I had, there was one person made a comment and I was just like, okay, I think you've got confused. And then somebody else made the same comment, like, and I was like, oh, actually, I think it's me that's got confused here. <laughs> it's not these dudes. <laughs> I think the guy who got confused with Ben. <laughs> so apologies about the uh, confusion there. I, I occasionally do that. I am a bit scatterbrained as you, as you all as you all know it's part of my charm though i'm trying to like try and see it that way <laughs> it's part of battlemost charm how many scavenging points we've got here we got loads why why have i not got a scavenging facility up here i don't know <laughs> i don't know the answer to that question like i should have one we're not building much this turn are we uh, apart from the volcanic let's have a look at the construction overview uh, yeah, we're building the volcanic energy plant. It's coming up in three turns, and we've just put up a sca scavenging furnace in Ogalar Ruins. Um, I think we should be getting... Let's definitely get the recycling facility up here. It's super cheap to put yes, up. Um, in that case, we probably want to get a couple of artisanally made machines. Aye, aye, sir. Just to cover that. Uh, yeah, we've got plenty there. Everything else is looking kind of okay. We, we didn't go with a big push this turn. We replaced one of our brigades, which was really important for this front. Uh, I think I'm going to try to do the same next turn. We do need more recruits, man. But, you know, what are you going to do? Standing by. Yes, sir. I suppose one thing we could do is just increase the, increase the amount of max recruits. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, that will be something we can try and do. Because it looks like people are moving from Neris back over to here. So I'm much mistaken. Yeah, by the way, slave traders are... The slave trader is stealing population every turn. 100 population. So that doesn't help because that's... We're only getting a little bit of natural growth here. We're getting 400 per turn of natural growth. We're, we're having that reduced by a quarter by the slave trader. By the way, there was another thing that we could do from the slave trader, which is, uh, you know, shake him up for credits. The thing is, I kind of want to buy the population off him whenever I need to. So... And I, th I think actually, look, if I can buy 2,000 population, it won't be, I won't be able to do it every turn because it pisses everybody off. But doing it, you know, every two or three turns, that's going to really help our, pop you know, situation with workers and stuff. Um, yeah, and with, then we can start putting some colonists up too. But I, you'll, as you'll see, look, I didn't put any colonists up here. And we got 2,000 workers just appeared out of nowhere. They, they've just migrated from out here because there's a job to do and they need to do it. So the scab furnace went up here. I think we want to put a bureaucratic office up here next. Now, the only thing about the bureaucratic office is it takes a hell of a lot of workers and it takes energy. But I think that we're going to start getting the energy up. We also do need to... Um, we look, it's starting off as a medium civilization. We do need to increase uh, quality of life here pretty damn quick. But I think the first thing that you're going to want to put up is a bureaucratic office. The other thing that we could do is maybe go for a solar panel field. Um, that's two rounds... It's going to pretty much drain all our um, rares. And maybe the volcanic, you know, this volcanic plant is probably going to do the job. It's going to be three turns. Yeah, the scavenging furnace seem, and, and the other stuff is basically, it's, that's going to cover it for a bit. I probably do want to put the solar panels up though. Just having the level one solar panel is just a nice little boost. That would then enable us to turn off the scab furnace potentially. Um, recycling facility is also really useful to get those extra rares up. 
Yeah, man, that's a, that uses a lot of people as well. Look, 2,000 people in there. Let's get the bureaucratic officers Copy first, because that. that goes up in one turn, and uh, that is essential, I think. Uh, we will need to, we'll need to uh, attract some tr uh, people over there as well. Now, we don't have a governor here. We'll figure one to put in. I think what we'll do is we'll probably play one of our cards. We have got a civilian card, recruit civilian. And we've got to recruit senior. Seniors are pretty good as well. Let's recruit a civilian and see what we get. Okay. He's not great. Oh, is that the one we got? Yeah, look, he's a senior. Look, wow, capability four. My lord, look at him. Now he would have made a good he would have made a really, really good advisor. But look at that war rating. Maybe we put this guy into uh, one of our OHQs. He hasn't got the experience yet, but War 52, good lord. I mean, he's going to be making he's going to be making them rolls. Okay, he's good. He's good. He's not going to he's not going to live a long time. He's 67. He might we might see out Oh no, sorry. He's 25. Hang on a minute. Yeah, it was a civilian we recruited. I shouldn't have skipped through the uh, the thing to say who it was. I don't think it was him, was it? Yeah, he's got 105 experience. It was 106. I'm pretty sure it's him that came, Chet Nuvoid. Uh, but he's a really, really good look. He's a civilian? Yeah, he's a community leader. He's a pretty impressive community leader as well at that. Look at that, man. What a what a, I mean he's t uh, I thought I was looking at his relation for his age I could tell I'm tired uh, so yeah he's 25 years old man this guy is going to be really really good think about him but at the end of the game um, he really would really do well in high command or something maybe we'll find a place for him he's too good to be a governor that's for that's for sure anyway folks I'm gonna end the episode here because it's uh, getting a bit long in the tooth I, I think we've done everything we need to do for the turn, pretty much. Pretty much. Let me just attack him with these guys into Avon. Can't remember what these guys even were now. Okay, we, we, we didn't even manage to recon m uh, many of them. Yeah, they got some biped cavalry, but that's fine. They got some kills. Yeah, we're good to go. All right, guys, I will catch you in the next episode. Take it easy.